Ah, oh, another day, another video, and another hot penny stock. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today is Monday. It is September 9th. Now, keeping with the fashion of this show, we're going to focus in on a hot penny stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. I trade stocks under $5 every day. These stocks can be found where? Anywhere. Everywhere, they're on every single market. There is no lack of penny stocks. But I'm looking for a hot penny stock. One that has potential to make us money. And normally when I find a hot one, it's when I'm looking at the charts. Because I can see heat in a chart at a glance. All you've got to see is a bullish chart pattern. And you know this thing is going to run 6, 7 out of 10 times. There's your heat. Match that chart up to some hot news from the company. And you've got yourself a hot penny stock like SRFM. This is Surfair Mobility. Now, I did find this by looking at the chart. She does have heat, <laughs> but it's not the kind of heat we're used to looking at. The chart's a bit wonky right now. She's been falling. She's coming out of a reverse stock split, a one in seven, about two weeks ago. And as you would expect, the begruntled investors started selling. And she was falling. Well, she's found a floor and she's bouncing off of it right now. But <laughs> that is not our catalyst. Our catalyst is the hot news that came out not too long ago about a deal with Palantir. So we've got reason to be looking at this stock right now. So SRFM, she finished the day. Looks like she's getting aftermarket activity. She's still climbing. We're at $1.15 right now. She's closing in on 12% gains, up 12 cents. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. We don't get a whole lot of them, but this comes with benefits over the OTC. First off, all of your transactions are free. You don't have to pay to get in or get out of these stocks. Second, you can trade pre-market after market. You can never do that with the OTC. There's a heck of a lot more money up on the major exchange as well as volume. If you're going to be trading stocks trying to make a profit, that's what you want, money and volume. And last but not least, there's a lot more rules up on the major exchange, which is good for us. This keeps the companies honest, keeps our investments safe. So what exactly does Surfair Mobility do? Well, they tell us here that Surfair Mobility operates as an electric aviation and air travel company in the United States. It offers an air mobility platform with scheduled routes and on-demand charter flights operated by third parties and air cargo services. Now, diving into their website, surfair.com, they tell us here that they believe by combining their three brands together and utilizing their electric airplanes and their next generation AI software platform, they can transform regional air mobility and keep up with the growth. They think they are launching something new here with their new AI platform, which is going to help all these small airlines run, all of them. And the FFA is looking for something right now. And they are starting off this company with that platform and then going to sell it off to all the other ones. Now, they tell us up here, those three brands are Surf Air. This is only in California. Then you have Southern Airways Express. This is their biggest subsidiary doing most of their business. And most of their business is coming from long-term reoccurring government contracts through the Essential Air Service Program, whatever that is. And then their last brand, this is for Hawaii and all the connected islands. This is Mokulili. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but maybe I'm not. So the company doesn't just fly the planes. They have software for all the charting and the scheduling and the routing for all of this. Now we're going to get into some more information here looking at the news. We've got three pieces of news here that all came out in August. We're going to look at these two. The one in the middle tells us about that reverse stock split in August. They announced it in August and then they implemented it in August. And we went from about just under a half a billion shares to about 90 million shares now. Now let's take a look at these two pieces of news. Both came out in August. Surf Air Mobility announces closing of $35 million mandatory convertible security with Gem Global Yield. Now this is interesting. The company today announced that it closed the previously announced issuance and sale to Gem of a mandatory convertible security. 
The security has a par amount of $35 million and is convertible into a maximum of 8 million shares of the company stock. So it sounds like they made a deal a while ago and when the company wanted Jem to do it, they could have Jem invest this money. And it looks like they pulled that right now. So they just had a $35 million investment from Jem. And this is convertible. They can be turned into 8 million shares, but they're not saying that's what's gonna happen. It is just a possibility. But this is even better. Jem has also agreed to refresh the company's ability to take both advanced drawdowns, one for 100 million and one for 300 million. Basically, they're getting a $400 million loan approved. So they've got an investment of $35 million and the same company is offering up a $400 million loan as they need to use it. That is outstanding. The company is not hurting for money. Now, this is the big catalyst, folks. Surf Air Mobility announces plan to form new venture called Surf Air Technologies LLC and enters an agreement with Palantir Technologies to power operating system for the advanced air mobility industry. The companies have already been working together since 2021, developing operator software used by Surf Air Mobility. Surf will leverage Palantir's AIP to build a unique and transformative set of software tools for regional air operators and electrified aircraft OEMs. So the two companies have been working together for Surf Air's benefit. Now they're going to take all of that and build on that with AI and now sell that as a product to the rest of the commuter programs out there. They go on to tell us that Plantier and Surf Air will engage their enterprise teams to make this technology broadly available. The tools the companies have developed to date have focused on the most important needs for Part 135 operators, that's what they call the small plane operators, and includes crew scheduling, business intelligence, distribution, and pricing. Surf Air has already seen improvements to its own operations and businesses across these categories. This work with Palantir has laid the foundation for Surf Air's platform to be able to host and provide the tools for multiple brands beyond just Surf Air. Surf Air will be the first customer and consumer for Surf OS, and it plans to use these tools to enhance deployment and utilization of its own electrified aircraft once certified. Surf Air is considering bringing in outside investors to capitalize the Surf Air Technologies venture. More money! Surf OS powered by Palantir's Foundry and AI platforms, will provide cutting-edge AI-powered software infrastructure to operators of scheduled service and charter services, consumers, and aircraft manufacturers not in existence today. The potential market opportunity is large, with over 11,000 aircraft just in the United States alone and over 5,000 airports. The introduction of new electrified vehicles for passenger and cargo use are anticipated to create a new form of mass transportation with low cost, low emission, point to point flying on short haul regional routes. This is big business, folks. Commuter aviation. It's like the bus line. You know, the same people are riding them over and over and over again. So now we've got a green way to do this. You're not going to lose any convenience and you're probably going to save money. Everybody's going to start to flock over to this. And before you know it, it will be the way commuters fly. Electric airlines. And they've got a program now that they're going to make money on, not just in their own company, but selling it to other airports and other operators of these small planes. And that's the beginning of their market. They want to start with the small planes and work out to the bigger planes. They are even working on planes like the Cessna. They are redoing the Cessna right now, making it electric. So they've got a lot of plans and they are growing fast. But you can see that by looking at the revenues. Let's go take a look at some of that stock information right now. Taking a look at the relative volume for the company. Well, that had a nice jump today. It's a little low in either case for being on the major exchange. She was at 78,000 shares a day for the last 30 days as an average. Today, she was over a half a million. It is definitely under the radar, but that's a lot more than what she was doing. So she's catching attention. 
Share structure for SRFM after the one in seven reverse stock split, we're at just about 90 million. I don't have any clue what the float is. I don't have any idea what the insiders own to calculate it. All I can tell you is it's not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count, right? And it won't be any lower than a half a million. So somewhere between a half a million and 89 million is your float. Market cap for Surfair Mobility, we are just over 92 million. Taking a look at those financials, we've got three years here. Remember, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. So we're looking at millions of dollars. They have been growing at a tremendous rate with their revenues. 2021, we were just about 12 million. 2022, just less than doubling that to 20 million. And then by 2023, taking that 20 million and virtually tripling that to 60 million. This is growing very, very quickly, folks. The problem here is, is that they're not making any profit, but they're closing that profit margin, whatever it is. With 11 million back here, they were losing two and a half million. Now they're making 60 million and they're only losing 1.5. Let's take a look at the quarterly, see if it's an improvement. It is. And look at here, every single quarter is growing consistently. And year over year, going from last year's 6 million to 32 million, that's a 500% increase. Every quarter is growing consecutively. So this is looking good. And look here, we're getting out of the negative numbers. We are now into positive numbers. For the last two quarters, we've been making gains, getting close to $7 million profit now, just in the last six months. Balance sheet for the company. Don't forget those three zeros over here too. Cash and cash equivalents. I call it the bank. We got about one and a half million in the bank. Total assets, 105 million. Total liabilities, ow, that's got to hurt. 233 million. So we're holding stockholder deficit here. Yikes, of 128 million. So the company's making real strong revenues. They don't have any stockholder assets for us. We've got deficit, but they're starting to make profit. They've just had a big investment of 35 million. They've got a loan of 400 million. They have got a deal with Palantir with a new product that they're going to be selling, making more money. So things look like we're on a change financially. So hopefully sooner rather than later, this number here changes for us. Take a look at our disclosures. Surfair Mobility. I did jump through these. We have a 424B3 here. This tells us that they're going to be selling 1.5 million shares on the market. Don't worry. These aren't new shares. These are resell shares. A big investor has asked the company to resell those shares, so it's not going to increase the float. Then I found this interesting. This 144, we got two of them here. What this is, is a summary of all the buys or sells from an insider. This happens to be the CEO, I believe it is. And they show us down here that from the last day of August, the 30th, to the 3rd of September, he has sold every single day. Now he's not unloading, he's selling some. I mean, this was only 1,400 shares. 15,000, 10,000, 9,000, 12,000, but it's consistent. Now, this doesn't look like anything related to the company. I'm thinking it's probably got something more to do with this personal life, but what do I know? I don't know, but I can tell you this, those dates you just saw there, you're going to see them correspond on the chart to down period. This is when the stock was falling right around the split period. And that's when he was selling while it was falling, not while it was climbing. So personally, I'm thinking the man needed the money for something. Why else would you sell when the stock is falling? Just my opinion. Outside of that, I don't see a whole lot of other filings here to look at. So we've got Catalyst. She's still climbing aftermarket. We're at 116 now. We've got Catalyst. We've got a chart that is in recovery after a violent reverse stock split. It looks horrible. I think she's at an all-time low and she's coming off of it right now. Let me share with you what I found. We're now taking a look at ticker SRFM on my free trading platform, Think or Swim.
We got Surf Air Mobility opened up to a six month, four hour view. And as plain as day, you can see she's been in a downtrend the entire time. Now, what you got to remember about this stock is that she had a reverse stock split halfway through August, a one in seven. Now, normally what you would see here is a big green bar pushing that price up seven times and everything on the other side is up at a higher price. And everything back here is the old price. Well, they don't do that anymore. Now they multiply the entire chart, everything going back as far as the chart goes by whatever ratio was in the split. So this high here of $12.88 never ever occurred. You've got to divide this by that ratio of seven. So you're looking closer at $1.80 for her high back there. So it's a real pain in the butt. I don't know why they do it. Everything in front of this reverse stock split, you can trust the numbers. Everything behind it, you're going to have to divide it by seven. So we did have a big surge here. Once she came under the 200, she went into this tailspin. Now it was right here when the 200 day MA started to go flat. That's when you have your breakout opportunities. She took it. She jumped here from the price back then of about a buck 75 up to 550. Now you got to divide all those numbers by seven, but in either case, she took a very strong run here. And what's most important to recognize is that there was no catalyst. There were no filings. There were no press releases. The only reason I can see that she ran and had all this volume come in is because of the chart setup. The 200 finally was going flat. Now she came down out of that one and she hugged that 200, slipped underneath it, tried to get back up on top and then took this big fall because of the reverse stock split right there. They had announced it before it happened. People started selling before it happened. After it happened, people started selling because they were upset. They woke up and saw their shares were missing. Those that weren't keeping up with the news. Now it was this period right in here that the CEO was selling his shares. You don't sell when a stock is going down unless you absolutely need the money. That's why I'm thinking it was a personal situation. After this downfall, she slowed down a little bit, but she kept trickling. She came all the way down here to an all time low of 90 cents. This is after the reverse stock split, after getting the price up over a dollar, meeting compliance. Now she's back up underneath the dollar. Now she's only been underneath the dollar for one day. Yeah, one day, two days, I think two days. And right now we're coming back up over a dollar again. She is starting to climb. Lots of volume came into the picture. Now we do have a support and resistance right there. We got another one we'll grab up right about there. Yeah, that's pretty close. Oh, didn't get it. There we go. And I see another one right there. Got to have your supports and resistances, folks. You have no clue where to get in or where to get out if you don't have speed bumps. That's what these really are to me, folks. The price will slow down just before it hits one of these, in most cases, and it could go over it, it could stop, it could back up. So in most cases, a day trade, I will sell half of what I own right there. If she makes it over, great. I've got 50% more to go to the next speed bump. And then I'll sell another 50% if it looks like it's going to go over. If it looks like it's not, if it starts stuttering, I see MAs turning over, I'm out. I sell everything I've got. But these supports and resistances give me that heads up. So all of our MAs right now are catching up to the price and the price to them. We need those to all start turning up. So we're waiting right now and it shouldn't take too long for this to happen. In the meantime, our price is starting to climb. When the price gets on top of these MAs, we've got a strong chance of this starting to surge. Our oscillators down here are looking really nice. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, she was falling, she's cupped at the bottom, she's coming back up. We're going to have a crossover and she's going to start climbing here. It looks like same thing going on with our MACD. We had a crossover. It's pushing up. Look at all the green bars. That tells you this is positive strength coming into the picture and our RSI. Holy cow. That was way down here at 27. She has come out of the basement and she's been climbing. She's still cool. She's down there at 47. I don't like to see it any lower than 55, but it is climbing. That's the important thing. The other thing I want to point out to you is this area right here. Well, you can't see it. This area right here, you see that hourglass shape? 
that is a pattern not exactly the hourglass but you can learn a lot here when the blue ppo is falling and the adx which i like to call trend continuation you get a straight line here doesn't matter if it's up down or sideways you get a straight line with the trend on the board soon as the trend changes the direction of your line changes well when you see both of them coming towards each other like that your price is falling guaranteed and when you see them pulling apart from each other getting further and further guaranteed your price is climbing so right now the oscillators look absolutely perfect on this chart let's come on down to our 20 day one hour view all right we've got a high back here of 294 that we've got to divide by seven because it is behind the reverse stock split off of that high she came underneath the 200 and she started to fall dropping on each one of these supports until she hit this bottom one and now she is turning up now i want to grab another support here i see one right there and we've got a few soft ones here let's grab a stronger one right there yes all of this is sitting on top of it this is beating its head up against it that's what i'm really doing i am putting lines where the price sits or stops the most often now what we've got going on here is a very pretty setup folks she's coming downhill she's hit this low bubble she's got up on top of this support she's been riding it now for a couple days she's starting to push up slowly she's climbing she's on top of her nine on top of the 50 the 20 is already starting to climb and here's our golden egg this is our 200 haul the 200 haul has as much power and as much authority as that 200 day ma and both of these take 200 days of prices and average them together but the 200 haul does something special it relates to current prices so you get an entirely different line here that relates to the price they've got a friendship going on here folks and normally when i see the 200 haul underneath the price with the 200 MA above it and it turns blue like it's doing right now it's just hit the bottom and it's starting to come up that's when I see a strong push on the price so in my opinion from what I know about charting I think this is going to start to push up hard our next resistance here is at 127 we're at 116 normally you will see this push all the way to the 200 and in most cases go over it but when it goes over it don't think it's going to keep going the initial breakthrough tired it out it's going to fall back hopefully just to the 200 and bounce around a little bit and that's when you can catch another entry and catch another run take a look now at our five day five minute yeah we'll go there so we've got a high now that we can trust <laughs> this is a buck 40 this is after the reverse stock split fell for days two days straight down to that all-time low bounced up got on top of our strong support here rode that started to push away got through our 200 floating on all of the strong ma's here our 200 haul and our 50 day she is bouncing all over these two right now and in the meantime our 200 day ma has changed trends folks our stock is now on an uptrend on this short chart and she is riding on these strong ma's up here the 50 and the 200 she's pulled back a little bit after market but she is pushing i don't see her falling right now the oscillators that's where you really want to read your strength so let's come down here and zoom in on what we got going on all right it's gotten a bit befuddled here at the end of the day but at this very moment she is climbing just like our MACD it's befuddled but it is just starting to climb and our RSI was going sideways at 47 but she is now at 55. I like the charts folks they're warm I'm not going to say they're super hot but they're more than warm they're kind of hot <laughs> and we've got a strong catalyst we've got revenues that are really growing strong right now they're going into profit mode and they're going to be getting more business now with their new uh surf os product so i like the company now there may be a few more days for, for this to run than just tomorrow i like to find stocks that are going to run in the next couple of days but i'd pay attention to srfm for the next week absolutely but it isn't going to hurt you to do some more due diligence now is it due diligence never hurt anybody matter of fact it's probably going to help the more you know the more you're going to grow See you, folks.